Hey, welcome back to Baird Squid. In this video, we're going to be finding out the volume of pyramids. Now, that will be an easy task if we have the perpendicular height of the pyramid. However, we're going to be dealing with pyramids without the perpendicular height using the Pythagorean theorem. Coming up. Okay, so we're going to find the volume of this particular pyramid. Uh, notice here that we do not have the perpendicular height. We do have the slant height of 13 centimeters, and we have a base 6 by 8. Now, normally what we would do is we would do a third times the base area times the height of the pyramid. Now, the height would refer to this perpendicular height, which in this case we don't have. So we're going to have to work that out using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to show you what we have. We need to work out the perpendicular height. And in that case, if I do the cross diagonals of the base of the pyramid, then I can see that that's going to hit right in the center. It's going to intersect right in the middle of the base of that pyramid. And that will create my right angle triangle, which consists of the height, half of the base and the slant height. So what I'm going to do here is I actually need to work out what the diagonal is using this side of the base and the six over here. So let's redraw that so you can see it in good perspective. So what I have here is I have six centimeters and I have eight centimeters. Remember the corners, all the vertices are right angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find out the diagonal of the base of this pyramid. I'm hoping that you've already watched the video on Pythagorean theorem. If you haven't, I'll link it in the cards above and I'll put it in the description below so you can go and check that out. So I'm going to set up my equation. I'm going to do six squared plus eight squared equals c squared. That's my six, that's my eight, and that obviously is my hypotenuse, so that's going to be c squared. That gives me 36 plus 64 equals c squared. Now, if I do the inverse of square, I will square root 100, and therefore c would be equal to 10 centimeters. Okay, so now we know that the diagonal of the base is 10 centimeters long. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get rid of the blue triangles because we no longer need that. All we need is half of the base. Why? Because remember, this point here is exactly halfway between the two diagonals, which is the exact center point of the pyramid. So what we're going to do is we can get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. And we know that this is then 5 centimeters by 13 centimeters. And we're trying to work out what the height is. Now remember that this is 5 centimeters because we worked out that the diagonal from vertex to vertex was 10 centimeters. So half of it would be 5 centimeters. At this point, we're going to use Pythagoras again for the second time. Now, 13 is my hypotenuse, so I'm going to do 13 squared minus 5 squared is equal to h squared. And this time h is the perpendicular height. That would give me 169 minus 25 equals h squared. And if I do the inverse of square and I square root 144, therefore the perpendicular height would equal to 12 centimeters. Okay, so since I have the perpendicular height of 12 centimeters, I can now go ahead and use the formula for finding out the volume of the pyramid. Now that's going to be a third times the base area times the height. So now very simply, I'm going to substitute the values that I have. The base is 8 by 6, so that's 8 by 6 here. The height is 12, and then that would give me a third times 48 times 12. And so that would give me a total volume of 192 centimeters cubed. Okay, pause the video here and attempt to do the next question on your own. Once you've worked it out, put your answer in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, drop me a like and share it with a friend. And if you have any questions regarding the volume of pyramids, then put them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you need any help on finding out the surface area of pyramids or other three-dimensional shapes, then check out these videos and consider subscribing for more tips, tricks and tutorials on math. And I'll see you in the next one.